In the United States in 1939, there were many one-shot special comic books released on the market that did not have a regular monthly schedule. Superman Comics, Ashcan, No Number, 1939, published by DC Comics. This was a black and white cover, standard Golden Age size comic, but an Ashcan and not officially put on the market for sale. The Ashcan comic was produced to secure the copyright of the title. The interior contents appear to be from Action Comics number 8. Only two known copies of this Ashcan exist. Both were purchased from Sol Harrison, who later became president of DC Comics. As is typical for Ashcans, this one features reused art, the cover art from Action Comics number 7 by Joe Schuster and part of the interior of Action Comics number 8. This makes this the first time that the famous Superman logo ever appeared on a cover. Motion Picture Funnies Weekly number 1, 1939, published by First Funnies Inc. This historic comic book features the first printed appearance of the Submariner, who would later become part of Timely Comics. The comic was never released to newsstands. It was created as a promotional item by the Lloyd Jaquette Studio of Artists, also known as Funnies Inc., intended to be a giveaway to be distributed weekly at movie theaters, as demonstrated by the back cover ad which elaborates on the concept. The Submariner story even has a box on the last page saying, Continued next week. The very existence of this comic book was not even known to comic fandom until the 1970s. It is now believed there are eight copies known to exist, and the most desirable one of the bunch is the pay copy from Funnies Inc. The office copy in which the amounts paid to the creators of the issue were noted in longhand. While this is not a timely or Marvel publication, it does have the first printed appearance of a major timely superhero. When the giveaway series didn't get off the ground, Lloyd Jaquette simply reused Bill Everett's Submariner story for Marvel Comics No. 1, produced for Timely in its entirety by Funny Inc. The continued next week box was removed and Everett added four pages to the story. As for the rest of the contents of the issue, it's all black and white inside, consisting of various humor and adventure features. This was a free giveaway comic, 36 pages. The editor was Lloyd Jaquette, with Bill Everett as the art director. The cover art is by Fred Schwab. The Submariner appears in an eight-page story titled Here is the Submariner, written and drawn by Bill Everett in this early superhero character, featuring the introduction, first appearance, and origin of Prince Namor as the Submariner. Also, Anderson... Nelson, Carly, Princess Fen, Emperor Thakor, and Dorba. Prince Namor, having learned of what the race of white men once did to his undersea kingdom, vows and is encouraged to make war on the surface dwellers. The story would be reprinted in Marvel Comics number 1, later in 1939, from Timely Comics. Cartoon and his copycat is a four-page story written and drawn by Martin Filchok, which would be reprinted in Green Giant Comics number one in 1940. Filchok wrote most of his own scripts and early on most Funny Zinc staffers did their own lettering. Spy Ring is a six-page story drawn by Jay Fletcher, reprinted later in the year in Silver Streak Comics number one from Lev Gleason Comics. American Ace is a seven-page story drawn by Paul Loretta featuring the origin of the American Ace, and this would be reprinted in Marvel Mystery Comics number 2, later 1939, from Timely Comics. Little Lulu and Her Pals is a hardcover book with Dust Jacket, published in 1939 by David McKay Publications. It reprints single-panel cartoons from the Saturday Evening Post. This rare book is not listed in the Overstreet Price Guide. They'll Do It Every Time is a no-number special one-shot comic produced in 1939 by David McKay Publications. It's a book format, soft cover, dimensions 10 by 7 and 3 quarter inches, color cover with black and white interior. They'll Do It Every Time was a single panel newspaper comic strip created by Jimmy Hatlow, which had a long run of over eight decades, first appearing in 1929, running until 2008. The title of the strip became a popular catchphrase, still used today by many people who have no idea of its origin. The Masked Pilot 
1939, published by Dell Comics. This is a one-shot comic with 16 pages, color cover, dimension 7.5 by 5.25 inches, newsprint binding and saddle stitched. R.S. Callender is the copyright holder of this strip, and the artwork is by Bob Jenny. John Hicks Scrapbook Number 2, likely published in 1939 by Eastern Color. The comic resembles a single series book, 68 pages. Strange as it seems is the main theme of the book, appearing as a syndicated cartoon feature originally in 1928 and became a familiar brand to millions around the globe for its comic strips, books, radio shows, and film shorts. Created by John Hicks, this is the number two scrapbook released likely a year after the first one. Pure Oil Comics, 1939, no number, published by Eastern Color as a promotional comic for Pure Oil. It's a one-shot giveaway comic with 24 pages of comic strips, including varied genres such as Buck Rogers, War on Crime, Sky Roads, and Napoleon. Captain Easy. 1939, published by Holly Comics, no number. This is a one-shot comic containing reprints from the funnies and 1938 Sunday strips by Roy Crane. Captain Easy, Soldier of Fortune was an American action-adventure comic strip created by Roy Crane, syndicated by Newspaper Enterprise Association beginning in July 1933. The strip ran for more than five decades up until 1988. Captain Easy is featured on the cover, likely drawn by Roy Crane, as he was the writer and artist of the strip. And we have Captain Easy for 67 pages in this issue, reprinted from the Captain Easy Sundays. Lone Ranger Comics, number one, 1939, published by Lone Ranger, Inc. This is the first Western comic book devoted to a single character. A second version was released with a large full promotional poster pasted over the centerfold and a smaller poster pasted over the back cover, including new additional premiums not originally offered. The promotional copy available via mail order is significant as the first Western comic book devoted to a single character. Overstreet lists this book as scarce and does not even list a near mint price value. Cartoon Humor January 1939, published by Pines. Volume number one, number one, had a 25 cent cover price and went on sale October 18th, 1938 with a color cover and black and white interior. It was magazine size dimensions, eight and a half by 11 inches. The ongoing series came out every month and ran for 16 years with a total of 52 issues confirmed. Color cover, black and white interior, this risque humor magazine had painted covers throughout by Earl Berge, Jefferson McAmar, and others. Early issues were sporadic, then generally on a quarterly schedule, but only three issues per volume. The numbering of the final two issues don't reflect the previous releases, but con so coincide with the company's comics titles, which started at issue number five. Merry Christmas from Sears Toyland. 1939, published by Sears Roebuck. This was a no-number one-shot featuring Dick Tracy, Little Orphan Annie, The Gumps, Terry and the Pirates. A die-cut cover, which was unique for the time. This was a Christmas giveaway from Sears. Ten and a half by 13 inches with a die-cut book. All pages are shaped as the design of the cover. This was a free 16-page giveaway comic. Santa Claus, Dick Tracy, Little Orphan Annie, Moon Mullins, The Gumps, Gasoline Alley, Harold Teen, and Terry and the Pirates are all found on the cover as Santa lets all of the comic strip characters out of his bag. Dick Tracy appears in a one-page story written and drawn by Chester Gould. The Comic Folks Visit Sears Toyland is the title of the centerfold page with all the strip characters interacting with each other and toys from Sears Toyland. And Terry and the Pirates, written and drawn by Milton Caniff, appears in a half-page story. Sun Fun Comics, number one, 1939, published by Sun Publications. This was a rare one-shot comic with a high 15-cent price tag, which was unusual at this time. Color cover with black, white, and red interior pages. Standard Golden Age comic book size. Overstreet notes this book as rare, and Gerber's Photo Journal Guide rates it an 8 or rare. 
has satire on comics and possibly the very first Adolf Hitler appearance in comic books, Mussolini and Stalin appearances as well. This book contains a Gussie the Gob story, and this is the only issue of this title. Dick Tracy Triangle Shoes Giveaway Comic 1939 published by Western Comics. This is a one-shot promo free giveaway comic. The date is unknown but is listed as 1939 from Overstreet. The back cover includes drawings of Dick Tracy, Terry and the Pirates, Smile and Jack and Little Orphan Annie and a shoe store name such as Weatherbird or Triangle or Kinney or Pole Parrot. International Shoe Company made Red Goose shoes and in 1922 the company added Paul Parrot, named for Paul Parrot who had a parrot in his shoe store. Merry Christmas from Mickey Mouse, 1939, published by Western Comics. This was a no number giveaway comic, 16 pages, a shoe store giveaway featuring Donald Duck and Pluto who appear. This book features text with art. The cover reprints Mickey Mouse Magazine, Volume 3, Number 3. The dimensions are 7 by 10 and a quarter inches, printed on newsprint paper, and this was released at the same time as the regular monthly Mickey Mouse Magazine. 